When you realize what your future can be, you want to do it right. UCF Online offers more than 100 fully online programs, plus personalized support from success coaches, so you can get to the future that's right for you. From the University of Central Florida's Center for Distributed Learning, I am Tom Cavanaugh. And I am Kelvin Thompson. And you are listening to TopCast, the world-famous teaching online podcast. Keep trying out these, uh, <laughs> the, I am. these new modifiers. If I keep saying it, maybe it'll be true, right? Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Hey, we've got some international listeners. That's true. Based on whatever data we can get, which is imperfect, but we, mm-hmm. do, we do see that on occasion from, from all over. From all different continents, except Antarctica, haven't seen anybody from from there yet. But yeah, hey. I mean, some countries just have like you know one person on a you know particular episode or or whatnot. But um, I got to tell you, it's kind of weird, you know. I mean, even at the time we're recording this, there's still the ongoing um, Russian invasion of Ukraine, and dur- during this, we've actually had Russian downloads and Ukrainian downloads. I, I that makes no sense to me whatsoever, but. Because surely wow. people have better things to do. But Yeah, you would think. Although maybe in the middle of Russia, uh, where you're far away from it and not necessarily involved. Um, the Ukrainian to... one got my attention. It was Yeah, cool. I would think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, it, a brief aside, um, w- we have a student, a UCF online student who's in Kiev right now. Really? And she's, she's studying... Uh, she's an uh, international uh, relations, uh, fully online student. Yeah, I think she's got two classes that she's in and uh, doing her best to log in and study amidst, you know, bombings. It's wow. it's pretty remarkable. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's sobering. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It, it reminds me a bit of uh, when I taught for a former institution that... Um, served a lot of military students and I, I had a student one semester that I was teaching who was uh, at, at, the, at the base in Afghanistan in Kandahar and um, <laughs> she wrote me and said you know, you know Dr. Kavanaugh I'm going to be late with my assignment this week because we got attacked and, and I'm like okay yeah that's good tell me what you need and when you can get it in and we'll work it out it's fine yeah when you got mortars flying over the wall it, you got other things to worry about besides you know my assignment yeah, it puts yeah. it all in perspective, right? It does, yes. But that's not what we're here to talk about today, <laughs> Kelvin. I will be the king of awkward transitions. No, it's, 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 all, it's all good. But we, are, we have coffee in hand. We've got topic uh, at the ready. So would you like to know what you're drinking here? I would love to know what I'm drinking. I've already I've pre-sipped, so Pre-s- tell me. Pre-sipped. Uh, well, today's coffee is a dark roast blend called... Hidden City from Zoka Coffee in the Seattle area. And I was wondering about the title. You know, people make these titles of blends, Hidden City. And I speculated a little bit about that. I thought it maybe had something to do with the dark roast or whatever. But then I noticed that the roasters included a photo of Seattle, all but obscured by very low cloud cover. And uh, I know that you often comment that I brew a strong cup, so what do you think of this French roast coffee? It's good. I like a good French roast. It is, it is a bit strong. I had to add some extra froof um, to, to whiten it up um, mm-hmm, to get it mm-hmm. to the proper, you know, beige-ish color that I, uh-huh. that I prefer. Uh-huh. So, yeah, I did notice that, but it's good. I, I'm enjoying it. Yes. So now uh, I feel a little bit like... Uh, you know, I date myself even further than normal, uh, like Paul Harvey, you know, with kind of a, and now you know the rest of the story. Yeah. Uh, so below the fold here, I will say, uh, what you're drinking, Tom, is decaf. Decaf. Oh, yeah. Decaf. So strong, bold, flavorful, but decaf. Surprise. Okay. Decaf. Yeah. Yes. So, uh Hidden City Surprise. So you've already commented on the taste of the coffee, so now I'll ask, can you find a connection in this little coffee to today's topic? Interesting, interesting. <clears throat> well, I think I may have commented, especially when we were recording at home, uh, when, we were, when we were at home. Usually my, my go-to in the afternoon was a, a decaf French roast. 
Mm-hmm. Which was a little mm-hmm. strong, not quite mm-hmm. this strong, but mm-hmm. a little strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, from San Francisco Bay, they had the oh, nice, yeah, right. you know, <laughs> compostable uh, <laughs> K-cups that I, I like. Um, so uh, I, I guess I didn't expect it, but I've had it before, something similar. Mm-hmm. So the, the connection, let's see. Um, it, is, it is coffee. It is but maybe coffee. it's it's not quite the coffee that we thought we were going to get. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. think there's there's something in there mm-hmm, with mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. the topic du jour here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 the that's the path I was trying to walk yeah. for sure. Uh, I thought kind of the the surprise, you know, ooh, this is a little different, and the maybe even the the low lying cloud cover over over Seattle with just the Space Needle and a couple of building tops popping up over. Uh, maybe that symbolizes obscured intentions, perhaps, a little bit as well. So I thought the surprise and the obscuring, I thought maybe that kind of got us in the general vicinity of our topic. You want to tell people what our topic is? Sure. So today we're going to explore this concept that, that you've been calling onlineness. Mm-hmm. So what is it that makes an online course quintessentially online? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometimes students sign up for an online course only to sort of find out, surprised that, oh gosh, I got I have to show up for an orientation and I got to show up for my for my exams. But it's not quite so online. I I live in New York and mm-hmm. your class mm-hmm. is in. Atlanta or whatever. Um, so it makes it difficult. It's about setting proper expectations. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Uh, and <laughs> before we go any further, let's perhaps go on record and say uh, online courses we think really should be, you know, online. Yeah. Uh, that is, they require deliberate design in order to achieve the flexibility that students were pursuing when they sought out and enrolled in said online course, right? Would you agree Amen. with that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and all right, airing the dirty laundry. Not recently, but <laughs> years ago. I mean, we had issues where a student would sign up for an online class, and the example from New York is not arbitrary. Um, that they, they actually flew down for their exams uh, because the exams were in person in a testing lab. And like, well... We got to put a stop to that, and, yeah. and we did. Um, and you know, there, we've got arrangements that can be made if it must be a proctored exam, where you can go to a lab or something, or some other third party or whatever. But you know, that kind of stuff happened, and it's it's really a disservice a disservice to the students. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with I agree with that. And and yet, I think sometimes I, I bump up across this now and again. You know. Maybe not in the, those really egregious ways, but maybe in sort of tangential corollary kind of kind of ways, like just little nuances on did you did you think this through this online thing? Yeah. you know yeah I had a I had a, a I was invited yeah, I think it was yesterday, no Wednesday. Not that the listening audience cares or knows what day it is, but two days ago <laughs> when we were recording this uh, to a um, a department meeting with faculty, uh-huh. and I was invited to just do some Q and A if they had questions about online learning, and so I was happy to do it. And, and a number of the questions were along the lines of, like, how much face to face stuff can I get away with in my class? I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically the theme. And I was like, well, you know what? If if you want to do that, we have a modality for that. Yeah, right. Let's let's, <laughs> let's call it that, and not yes. call it the online class. So right. Let's try and set the expectations because, it, and to further complicate it, within the state of Florida, a lot of yes. this is defined by what's eligible for the distance learning course fee, yeah. which is 80% and above. Yeah. So 20% of your class could be face to face and still be considered quote unquote online at least as far as the distance learning fee is concerned. Yeah. Although, but in practice, we try it, not to... Right, that's, yeah. exactly, that's exactly right. I was going to say, I know I, I, I know it's maybe not always the most popular thing. We have colleagues who are like, well, you know, um, faculty and departments are within their purview to fit within that 20%. I don't tell anybody about the 20% if I can avoid it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I referred this department, which is in our lovely College of Engineering, to the modality that 
specifically allows for 20%. It's a, it's yeah. a primarily yeah. online yeah. class, yeah. but with some... And, yeah. and those courses are actually not even visible to our, our UCF online students. Sure. To sure. prevent that problem of the kid from New York having to fly down to take his test. Yeah, no, exactly, uh, exactly, exactly, slow, exactly so. I, you know, and I don't know, um, maybe I'll say this as kind of a, a little bit of a way in. I mean, all of this that we're talking about is a, is a, is a thing, has been a thing, will be a thing, to some extent or another, um, on an ongoing basis, and we can unbundle some of these principles more, but maybe the current moment where there's still a bit of, uh, maybe we'll call it modality flux, right? Like, for instance, the, I don't know what else to call it other than sort of pseudo high flex zooming of in-person classes, you know? With yeah. all that stuff, uh, it kind of complicates the, the, the online-ness thing, right? Because we start to think, maybe not we, you know, our listeners, maybe we wouldn't do this, but colleagues, people we know, might inadvertently become insensitive to the needs of online students if we begin thinking that onlineness is, quote unquote, is just a convenience, not a necessity, right? You just sort of go, well, you know, uh, you know, you're choosing to come to the class versus not. No, 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 no. Students with adult life responsibilities sought out a course that they didn't have to come into the classroom for, right? And that's a, that's a thing. Um, so, I, so I do think that this moment we're in right now makes it a little bit more challenging. Do you, do you find that or no? Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, uh, I, I get myself wrapped around the axle a little bit when, when we're talking about this idea of, of flex. You know, how, however that's defined, but usually there's a flex in there somewhere where it's I'm standing in my classroom and I'm teaching, but I'm, I'm either and or broadcasting and recording um, what I'm doing so that a distance audience can participate or students have the choice to come or not. So, mm -hmm. so the course was designed to be essentially a face-to-face -face course. Mm -hmm. that's, that's conducted synchronously in a classroom, presumably where there might be some discussion or something. And over time, the students gradually drift away and don't attend and suddenly become asynchronous online participants in a course that was not intentionally designed to be online. And is that an online course? I, I would argue no, but mm -hmm. it's become a de facto one. And so... Mm -hmm. We try to put some guardrails on to prevent that, but honestly, since the pandemic, with the ubiquity of Zoom, you know, mm -hmm. all kinds of things can happen out there with with creative and motivated faculty and students who prefer mm -hmm. convenience over getting up at eight o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. But gosh, it's still awfully difficult to communicate clearly with students in in those kind of situations that you describe, right? It's hard for students to know what they're signing up for, and and I mean, you make a good point too about the. Uh, the rise of online synchronous uh, courses. I, mean, I think we're seeing industry-wide more of that than we did pre-pandemic. Uh, we've said before on the podcast that uh, we didn't do really much at all of that uh, here at UCF pre-pandemic, and it's still a it's a it's a thing now. We've got a, a bona fide uh, modality for it, and so forth. But even there, right, like. There's less flexibility if you have synchronous, scheduled synchronous online sessions. But even there, you're not <laughs> expecting students to show up in your building, right, in your classroom. So, you know, there's still a certain amount of flexibility. So students knowing what they're signing up for and knowing what they're committing to and being able to plan their lives around it, that's a, that's a thing. Um, and then just a quick comment. You mentioned, like, our UCF online students, which... Uh, longtime listeners will know is our uh, program for exclusive, uh, like it's an exclusively online experience for students who um, get a reduction in the fees associated with campus-based services, so they don't have to come to campus at all. But we have a number of students, right, uh, in any given semester who are certainly taking fully online courses. And so for our purposes in this conversation, it is probably helpful to I would say to uh, to consider 
a student in an online course to be an online student. I've heard, you know, a colleague, a colleague of ours recently say, well, if they're not a UCF online student, I wouldn't consider them really an online learner if they're swirling across modalities. And I disagree. I think anytime you've got a student in an online course, you've got to think of that student as a as an online learner. And for course design, it's imperative. You gotta you gotta imagine that everybody's <laughs> I tell people, you're designing this online course, imagine you're designing for everybody being in pick a faraway country, you yeah. know? Yeah, I I agree. Um, yes, students will mix and match and take a variety of modalities concurrently, but that online course needs to function for the student in Alaska and we're that's in Florida. Right. You know? that, that's so, right. yeah, I, I totally uh, agree. And, and if it doesn't, I don't think it's a well-designed online class. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, maybe a couple of things. Uh, I think uh, something we've talked a lot about around here, requirements are different than options, right? So you can have options, maybe, if you, as long as you're careful with them. <laughs> it's requirements when you get in trouble, you know, like your, your hypothetical, well, non-hypothetical student flying from out of state in order to come to a required in-person experience for an exam or whatnot. See, it's the requirement that gets you in trouble. If it was an option for which there was an alternative, well, <laughs> you're in a whole different place. Right, right. It's this, yeah, it's the same thing for like the the orientation, the face-to-face -face orientation for the online mm -hmm. class at the beginning of the semester or the, the midterm study session or whatever it is, or even mm -hmm. office hours, mm -hmm. um, which now are mostly online <laughs> in the last two years. Um, but even prior to that, I mean, so all of those things, um, as long as they're, as you say, as long as they're optional, it, it's different. But if there is a requirement, I'm thinking of like a, adding an online synchronous element to, a, mm -hmm. to an asynchronous online course. Typically, as best practice, we, we recommend that faculty you know, do that more than once at mm -hmm. different times, days, mm -hmm. and record it be, mm -hmm. to try mm -hmm. and catch everybody. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The recording thing at a at a, at a minimum, right? Because then then you've got some you've got some flexibility built in there. Uh, it's not about the requirement being in that synchronous moment. It's about attending to whatever was shared in that session. And if there's uh, if there was something that students had to submit, you know, can can it be submitted asynchronously? based on uh, that synchronous session. You know, it's just, yeah. that's design, that's intentionality, right? You gotta think those things through and not, a, and not, a, not assume. Um, I just so. had a meeting right before this um, with, uh, with, with a faculty member who's in charge of a program and, and a dean and a chair, and, and we were talking about a proposal he has. It's a fully online program, and what he'd like to do, and you probably may know who I'm talking about, um, what he'd like to do is um, add a face-to-face -face cohort as an expansion of his enrollment and his offerings and the kinds of students that he can attract, especially international students if he wants to bring them here to the U.S. So where he's ended up is that for some of the courses, they're going to stay completely online and the face-to-face -face cohort and the online cohort will be taking them together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But for other courses, there will be a face-to-face -face section and an online section that mm -hmm. run concurrently where the like online discussions and online assessments are, you know, the courses are co-listed together mm -hmm. so that both groups do those online components, but the lectures that happen in the class are either consumed, participated in, uh, live in the classroom or online, depending upon which section that you're in. And it could be asynchronous online with recorded. It, it is an engineering sort of discipline, so it's probably very quantitative and um, they're writing formulas and stuff. So, you know, it's not like the students the discussion would be happening online as opposed to in the classroom where they're, they're kind of more conveying information. But I couldn't help but think as, as we were having this discussion like literally an hour ago mm -hmm. about this conversation that we were going to have now. Mm -hmm. And like, so 
I don't know. Is, is it online? Is that really face to face? I, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Is it fish nor fowl? Yeah. Modality flux. Yeah. yeah. Modality, modality flux. I mean, we're, you know, and that's why it is good to talk these things through and go, okay, well, if a student, you know, was completely remote, not just in a particular planned for circumstance, but an unplanned for circumstance, what would happen? You know, and those are, those are good test cases, I, I think, sometimes. You know, we, we box ourselves into corners uh, sometimes. Like, I remember um, talking to a different situation, but it, it, the boxing in, um, I want to say it was a, a, maybe an undergraduate course in legal studies. There was, a, you know, many, many of our online courses, right, they don't, all the coursework doesn't have to be <laughs> completed sitting in front of a computer monitor, right? You can... Right. You can, you can walk away from the monitor, but you can, there are examples of field work that one can go and do, right? Um, lots of examples of those things, but this was like a legal studies course and a fully online course, and the instructor announced, I don't know, somewhere mid-course, mid-semester, that there was going to be a field work experience. Students were going to have to go to and I think it was phrased as like the courthouse, like, you know, <laughs> locally, like Orange County or something like that, uh, during the work day, you know, and do some sort of an observation and write up notes and, and so forth. And there's several problems with that, right? Um, one, if, if it was framed as the courthouse in, you know, in, the, in downtown Orlando, well, no. Just because you brokered access to that, that's not... Right. <laughs> What if I'm in Saudi Arabia? What am I going to do? Fly in for the occasion? I don't think so. But you could certainly arrange, um, go to your local courthouse. Local per, per, protocols might vary, but generally they're accepting. You might, you want to plan in advance. You want to call them and ask if they could, you know, you, you know there might be a checklist of things. But you could say, go to your local courthouse and here's what you're going to do. Um, and then secondly, announcing it <laughs> mid-semester that there's going to be like a nine to five kind of an expectation. You know, hey, I take online courses because I work nine to five and I do this in the evening. So now I'm an, I'm an adult life responsibility student and I got to take time off of work to do this thing that, you know, you didn't announce until this week. That's not good either, right? So there's right. several things wrong with that kind of scenario. So it's not just the even the modality purity; it's it's the the the, the ripple effects, right? That you you got to think through. Um, you can't just assume that students are within driving distance of the campus. I like to you know Antarctica, wherever, <laughs> far away. <laughs> we'll get one of those students there one of these days. That's right. Antarctica. I think we had one a long time ago. It was like working for like a one of the like research agencies or something was doing some sort of field work in Antarctica. You would have Pretty to be, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, I agree. Um, yeah. You, you, you need to take all of that into account uh, in an online class. And, and one of the advantages of an online class is that the world is sort of your classroom if it's designed well. But, you know, I'll sort of bring it back to that question of design that we kind of started with and it has yeah. a bit of a theme for you and I that we always yeah. kind of talk about. Even that example that I just gave, I mean, what I said to the faculty member was that, well, we'll you know, we'll get his instructional designer involved and we'll, we'll start talking about how this can be put together so that it's, it's the best quality that it can be, because that's my biggest concern. We, mm -hmm. we don't want to do a course delivery strategy based on cost avoidance. You know, right. <laughs> it needs to be based on the objectives, the needs of the students, mm -hmm. ensuring that we're hitting our quality expectations. And, you know, that resonated with him, and I'm glad the chair and the dean were on the call because they agree with that. So, um, it, but it's real easy to look at the program and say, well, geez, we got to have X number of students at X amount of mm -hmm. tuition. And, and I mean, the whole point of trying this new model is because they kind of are looking to grow headcount. So um, that's what's driving it, but we can't let that tail wag this dog, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of contexts, right, at the uh, department, program level, institutional level. Shout out back to um, uh, 
TopCast episode 97, finding the right mix of modalities at your institution amidst all the flux, right? Um, we discussed some of the reasons institutions might pursue offering certain modalities and in, in, in a certain different mixture because of their context. But at the end of the day, though, I think, you know, like you said, you know, it comes back to design and it comes back to, you know, holding the line on an online course is an online course, right? And it, and you don't want to put students at any kind of a disadvantage ever. You have to kind of um, think that through and um, uh, <laughs> make it evident to, to students what the expectation is. And as you said earlier, and if it's something other than fully online, uh, don't call it an online course, call it something else. <laughs> right, that's exactly why we have the modalities we do. We got a flavor for everything. Yes. We can help you. We can help Boy. you categorize it cor correctly. Boy, Look, I we. lived this as, a, as an adult student. Yep. I took an online class one time, and, and it turned out that that online class had a requirement that I, I build something in a simulation lab on campus that you, it's not software that I could go buy, right? It was like really high-end expensive software that, mm -hmm. you know, they made available to students. But I had to come to campus and uh, book time in this lab to do this thing. And if I were in Alaska, it just wouldn't have happened, right? right. So it only works for local students who could come in on a Saturday and do it like I did. And sadly, I mean, thankfully, this is, this is a, a rare thing uh, in, in my experience during my time here at UCF, but I have seen situations uh, analogous to that where then the instructor of record kind of puts it on the student as it's their problem, like in, in your role there, right? Like, hey, I can't, okay, well, I'll be happy to work with you to see how you're going to solve your problem. No, 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 it's not my problem, you see. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And in fairness, I mean, this was many, many, many of years course. ago, so... Yeah, course. we've come a long way since then. Yes, that's, that's right. That's right. Uh, well, you think uh, it's about time to start wrapping up this, uh, this topic? Anything else sure. you want to add yeah. before we my, do? No, my decaf is, is running low. <laughs> thank you. My head won't buzz on the drive home. I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, thank you for the Seattle coffee. Yeah, you're quite welcome. Hope, hope it's enjoyable. Uh, well, let me try this by way of wrap-up. Um, we'll be doing our students a disservice, we might say, if we are careless with how we design or promote or support online courses. Students take online courses for specific reasons, and these courses must be designed to allow for maximum student flexibility, whether that's flexibility of time and space or flexibility of just space, whatever it is, maximum student flexibility if those courses are to fulfill their purpose. How is that? That's good. That's a good coda, a good summation of, uh, of what we just talked about. So just a reminder for all of our friends listening uh, that uh, the entire catalog of past TopCast episodes plus all of the read more about it links that are associated with each episode and more, you know, photos of our guests and links to coffees. And <laughs> it's, a, it's a real treasure trove of information <laughs> and follow-up. They're all available on our website, which you can find at topcast.online.ucf.edu. Again, topcast.online.ucf.edu. Mm -hmm. So until next time, for TopCast, I'm Tom. I'm Kelvin. See ya.